Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 29 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the horizontal situation indicator, the HSI, and we'll look at a prototype that I built for this. We'll then look at its incorporation into the front dash frame and we'll bring it online. Let's buckle up. In my last video I mentioned that I'd be going into a research phase to see which would be the best way to create the HSI and of those options to look at we had Helios or adapting a real instrument from an aircraft, a real HSI to run with the sim or to physically build it. The first of these that I took some time out to look at was Helios. We can see on screen some work I did previously on the RWR and it was around this time that I was working with, this was a monitor export to a small LCD screen and around this time I picked up a bigger LCD which was for the intended to be for both the HSI and the ADI in one. So I set Helios up to run with this LCD as we can see on screen and I have to say it worked really well. I was really impressed with Helios and I can see why a lot of people use that in their sim pits. So I went so far to uh, build a bezel as we can see a design for here and to look at a test fit to the sim pit frame. So this is the first possible way to replicate the HSI is all ready to go and I can use it according on how some of the other approaches pan out when I explore those. The second approach is to take a real HSI and look to adapt its run with the sim. Here's one that I picked up previously off eBay and it was good to be able to have a look at this and try and get an idea of how perhaps mechanically it'd work but also how it could be incorporated into the sim pit frame. There are a few concerns with this type of approach. Whilst it's a fantastic piece of kit and it just oozes quality, the biggest issue is just the sheer weight of it. Even if I pulled some of the innards out, it is fundamentally really heavy. And the frame of which I have for the sim pit can only take a certain amount of weight. There's also considerations around perhaps looking to source one exactly in keeping with what's within the A10 and from a cost point of view, from what I could see online, that they are very expensive. And then finally, the thought of how exactly you tap into the components within it and adapt them to run and some of the complexities around that. And whilst I think that is certainly possible, I think that for an instrument of this scope, with as many parts as it will have to it, I think working with components that already have a high degree of familiarity would give me a greater degree of control in replicating it exactly and reliably. And what this brings me to is the third way that I can look to replicate the HSI, which is to design and physically build the whole thing from scratch. So my starting point was to map out the HSI, and I did this initially by looking at all of the DCS BIOS snippets of code from the control reference library to understand which relates to which function, but also to test that. I then moved on to looking at which components I would use to replicate each particular function within the HSI. So what I'm looking to use here will be two rotary encoders, five stepper motors, a servo, some seven segment displays, and a couple of LEDs for the various flags. I've used loads of OLEDs in the front dash so far, but I've not used any seven segment displays. And when I did the UHF repeater, I remember thinking then, I look back at that now and I think a nice seven segment display in white would look really good there. And I think that'll be the case with this too. So quite keen to, to use the old seven segment display here. Some parts of the designer build were quite straightforward, such as the seven segment displays incorporating those very straightforward and the rotary encoders beyond that the part which was the most complicated was dealing with all of the rotating parts so you've got these two bearing pointers here and here you've got the uh, heading bug 
Then you've got these two discs that rotate around the HSI course um, and the HSI heading. And it's a question of how do you get the four items all rotating around a single core which itself is rotating. And in them rotating around this they don't collide with one another. So that was where I put quite a lot of thought initially. And it was really a question of just putting things together, making them work and then correcting deficiencies. The point I'm at now after having a period of time to build and test and rebuild parts of this is everything that we see on the screen here I've been able to incorporate. The one part which, and it's the only part as such at this point that's not fully functional in the prototype what we'll be looking at shortly is this deviation marker. The reason for this is my initial design to achieve the movement of the deviation marker from the left to the right, a sideways movement, was, as we can see on screen now, to use a servo with a ratchet gear which effectively gives it that linear movement. And as we can see now, that does give a good stable movement. So I took that design initially into the very centre disc and unit within this prototype. And again, we can see that in, in operation now. However, you can also see that the ratchet gear extends outward of the footprint of this centre unit. And whilst this protrusion wasn't massive, it was enough that later on, when you had all the other four items spinning around this central core, it did interfere with the movement of those. So what was therefore needed was a redesign of this where you achieve the same linear movement, but within the footprint itself. And I'd like to give a shout out to my father-in-law who, in talking to him about this challenge, mentioned to me a, a cam design. And that's what I then took and developed to what we can see on screen now. So what we have here is the linear movement again. But what's really important is it is contained fully within the footprint of this central core. So let's have a closer look at the mechanism. So we can see that this is fulfilling its purpose well. Uh, cheers, Phil. It was a great idea to, to approach it in this way. It's definitely within the footprint now. And because this is a recent revision that just needs a little bit more fine tuning, it's not in the prototype as yet, but will be in my next version of it. So the point I'm at now is to be able to work out what revisions and improvements I'll make to this prototype into the future. I need to take it from, I've done everything I can on my workbench and I need to now install it into this sim and run it and, and fly with it and, and live with it to over a short period of time see what other changes need to be made. And then at that point, I can combine it with the new mechanism for driving the deviation marker. And that will give me the final item to look to install. So let's take a look at the prototype. Let's power it on and we can see it's startup cycle. And let's also catch that from the side view. We'll just pan the camera around and just have a look at the overall unit and also the control board for it. And the control board that we can see here is an RS-485 network that I've put together. What we'll do at this point is just isolate and cycle some of the axes specifically.
And whilst I'll be looking to make other revisions to this in the future, so there is other work ahead, there was a fair bit involved to arrive at this point. There was one earlier version that I built, which I then stripped down before I reached a prototype right now. And then there was a whole load of parts that we can see now that didn't quite make it. So let's test it. I'll just wheel in my laptop. So I'll just start the data stream and give a shout out to DCS BIOS because it's an absolutely brilliant utility. So we'll start by looking at a few specific functions. We'll look at the rotary encoders and the seven segment displays. I am really glad that I use the white seven segment displays. It gives it that crisp look I was really looking for. Both the rotary encoders work well, they're responsive, I did find for this one here controlling the course that I had to lower the sensitivity of it so each indent related to just one uh, numeric value change. And we can see the HSI bug rotating clockwise around the edge and equally we can control that from within the sim. In terms of the center disk, the HSI course um, yeah, I'm pleased with the way that's been replicated. I think that the little bit of backlighting of the four green dots is to good effect. And the two white triangles as well, which we can see here alternating one from another. There's a number of points of rotation and the HSI bug and the bearing pointers one and two rotate freely without any contact amongst themselves, which is good because they're all in such a tight space. There is, however, slight contact at times between the HSI heading and the HSI course. That being the innermost circle and then the compass style. And that's because of the length of the arm that supports the compass dial. It sags ever so slightly, so it does at times touch it. And that's why the movement of the HSI marker, the heading is the one that's a little bit juddery and in fact looking at that one if you look at the 12 o'clock number at the top you can see it is fractionally a few degrees out from the sim so this is a perfect example of calibration and I'll go and do that now and we'll come back and talk about how I calibrated it right then calibrated and that's a great thing with each of the steppers they all have an IR sensor and a trigger arm just in the trigger arm you have full control of the zero detect position i'll just change the navigation mode just to trigger a few flags and other functions within the panel so this is something i'm i'm really wanting to get installed into the sim pit now and it's over a period of time that i can see what other modifications it needs as I live with it. Thinking ahead to some of the nighttime flying I've gone ahead and put a floodlight in. And whilst it's great that there is this floodlight into the future I would also like in addition some backlighting directly behind the engraved marker lines and text. And I'll just dim the light slightly, just to get an idea of what this will look like when I'm flying at night. It's coming really handy having this laptop as a, a test station. I wouldn't want to be plugging and unplugging constantly and testing things on my sim pit. Whilst you would struggle to fly the sim on the laptop, for test purposes it, it works just fine. 
Well, we'll just give it a once over just before install. So one thing's for sure, there's quite a lot of kit that we need to get installed into the frame. So let's take a look under the hood. So we've got the space at the bottom of the screen for the actual panel and the control panel will go in this corner. I'll remove the flight control stick to give enough space to install the HSI. And let's go ahead and put that back. We'll have a little bit of a close up look. Yeah, I can't wait to get this all up and running. I think I need a bit of nighttime flying. And another look under the hood. It's certainly looking packed under there. So we're up and running. I think it'll be nice to do a bit of flying tonight and put it through its paces. Reflecting on the panel, this one did take a considerable amount of time. And that was largely because there was a research phase, so I did spend time initially looking at Helios, which is absolutely fantastic. And had I not been able to have built this one myself, I certainly would have been happy to use that. I had a chance to examine a real HSI instrument and give some thought to whether I could get one and, and adapt that. And then, of course, to go through the process then of committing to, to building one myself from scratch and going through various iterations of it and overcoming a number of challenges along the way it's great to get to this point is it perfect absolutely not are there lots of things i need to revise into the future and improve yes is there more functionality that needs to be added yes but is it going to be a blast to fly with absolutely i'm really glad i've got this as part of the sim pit now and i really look forward to flying a good number of missions with it As I now start thinking ahead to the remainder of the front dash, I've been doing a little bit of work in the background on what will be the brow with the fire handles. I'm just giving a little bit of thought to the up front controller, but obviously I'm very conscious I've got that big gaping final hole of the ADI we can see now, which I need to again go through a bit of a research phase to think of the way in which I might tackle or approach that. Uh, and I'm sure that'll be a lot of fun. Well, it's time to sign off. So for anyone that's watched, I hope the video has been of some use. Thanks for everyone that's following my project. Really appreciate the support. Thanks for watching.